Good morning, students. Our topic for today is about staining of proteins and nucleic acids and lipids. And the first part of our lecture is the staining of proteins and nucleic acids. So just a quick review about protein. Protein is the basic component of living cells and is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and one or more chains of amino acids linked by peptide bonds. Based on chemical compositions, proteins occur in tissues either as simple protein which is made up of amino acids. Example of simple proteins are albumin, globulin, structural protein, enzyme, histones, and protamine. Simple proteins are demonstrated in tissue by histologic methods, amino acid histochemical methods, enzyme histochemical methods, and immunocytochemical methods. Next is conjugated protein, which is simple proteins combined with some non-protein material. Example of conjugated proteins are lipoproteins, mucoproteins, nucleoproteins, glycoproteins, and phosphoproteins. And lastly, derived protein, which is a protein derived from simple or conjugated protein by physical or chemical means, such as denatured proteins and peptides. There are also types of proteins based on physical configuration, which are fibrous, globular, and membrane proteins. First is fibrous proteins which form muscle fiber, tendons, connective tissue, and bone. Examples of fibrous proteins are actin, collagen, elastin, fibronectin, myosin, tau, tropomyosin, and tubulin. The organic portion or protein fibers found in connective tissues are either collagen, elastic, or reticular fibers. Fibrous proteins can be demonstrated by selective staining with small or large molecule dyes like in trichrome method, silver impregnation like in reticulin method, or specific dye-protein interactions such as Congo red stain for amyloid. Next type is globular protein which is more water-soluble than the other classes of proteins and it is found in blood and tissue fluids. Examples of globular proteins are albumin, alpha globulin, beta globulin, fibrin, gamma globulin, hemoglobin, immunoglobulin, and myoglobin. And the third type is membrane protein which functions in relaying signals within cells, allowing cells to interact and transporting molecules. Example of membrane proteins are CMYC, Estrogen receptor, glycoporin B, histones, hydrolases, oxidoreductases, and P53. So we are done with the review of proteins and amino acids. How about nucleic acids? So just a short review about nucleic acids. Nucleic acids consist of alternate sugar and phosphate groups with a nitrogenous base attached to each sugar group. There are two major nucleic acids. One is deoxyribonucleic acid or DNA which contains a 5-carbon sugar deoxyribose and is mainly found in the nucleus of the cell. The four nitrogenous bases of DNA are two purines namely adenine and guanine and two pyrimidines namely cytosine and thymine. And the other nucleic acid is ribonucleic acid or RNA which is found in the cytoplasm and to a lesser extent in the nucleus, particularly in the nucleolus. And the four nitrogenous bases of RNA are two purines, namely adenine and guanine, and two pyrimidines, namely cytosine and uracil. Staining depends largely on the attachment of dyes to proteins that have both positively and negatively charged groups. A tissue section contains many proteins that differ in their isoelectric points. At an ideal pH, certain tissue components will show a relatively acidophilia whereas others display a relative basophilia. 
there are ways on how to sharpen nuclear staining such as adding a very small amount of acetic acid to 1% to 2% aqueous solutions of neutral red. The small amount of acid slightly inhibits the ionic staining of background tissues, making the largely unaffected ionic nuclear staining appear more prominent. The final pH is usually about a pH of 4. Likewise, the minor adjustments to make the solutions more alkaline can be done with compounds such as sodium tetraborate or borax or sodium carbonate to methylene blue. In staining, an acid dye loves basic substances while a basic dye loves acidic substances. Therefore, acid dye like eosin are basophilic. It is attracted to basic or alkaline substances like cytoplasm, muscle, connective tissue, colloid, red blood cells, the calcified bone matrix, while basic dyes like hematoxylin are acidophilic and it is attracted to acidic substance like mitochondria or collagen. Hematoxylin is strictly not a basic dye, but it is used with a mordant that makes hematoxylin stain acts as a basic dye. The mordant binds to the tissue and binds to the dye, in this case hematoxylin, thus forming a tissue mordant hematoxylin linkage. Nucleic acids DNA and RNA are both acidic, so they bind to basic dye like hematoxylin. Other basic dyes aside from hematoxylin are methylene blue, toluidine blue, thionine, carmine, basic fusine, and azure. And in HNE staining, the nucleus containing DNA stains blue or purple. Histochemical methods are used to demonstrate the presence of amino acid molecules rather than whole protein molecules. They are based upon identification of specific linkages or groups within the amino acid molecules such as protein bound amino groups, phenyl groups, disulfides and sulfhydryl linkages, indole groups and guanidyl groups. The neutral buffered formal saline is the most commonly used fixative for amino acid histochemistry. And it is also important to avoid fixatives such as mercury chloride which react with amino acid groups. Now let's talk about alkaline fast green method for basic proteins, especially protamines and histones. Fast green is an acid dye that stains basic groups in the tissues, particularly basic protamines and histones which have higher isoelectrical points than the pH of the staining solution. Other proteins with lower isoelectric points are unstained. Trichloroacetic acid or TCA is used to remove nucleic acid that may mask the basic group of protamines and histones. Next is peracetic acid alcyon blue for cysteine and cysteine. Peracetic acid oxidizes cysteine and cysteine forming strong cysteic acid which stained blue-green by a basic dye like alcyon blue as shown in the photo on the right. Next is alcyon blue periodic acid shift staining for proteoglycans. This is a combined method utilizing the properties of both the periodic acid shift and alcyon blue methods to demonstrate the full complement of tissue proteoglycans. The rationale of the technique is that by first staining all the acidic mucins with alcyon blue, those remaining acidic mucins which are also PES positive will be chemically blocked and will not react further during the technique. And those neutral mucins which are solely PES positive will subsequently be demonstrated in a contrasting manner. So the demonstration of nucleic acids depends upon either reaction of the dyes with the phosphate groups or production of aldehydes from the sugar like the deoxyribose. However, there are no histochemical methods available to demonstrate the nitrogenous bases. Nucleic acids are best preserved in 
alcoholic and acidic fixative, especially carnois fluid that contains both alcohol and glacial acetic acid. Formalin is an acceptable fixative but has only limited reaction with DNA and RNA. And strong inorganic acids such as nitric or hydrochloric acid will extract nucleic acids and should be avoided. Some of the techniques in staining nucleic acids are fulgen technique which demonstrates sugar of DNA, methyl green pyronine technique which demonstrates phosphate of RNA, acridine orange by fluorescent method, and galliocyanin chrome alum method which demonstrates both the DNA and the RNA. So let's discuss these one by one. First is fulgen staining for nuclear DNA. Fulgen stain is a staining technique used to identify chromosomal material or DNA in cell specimens. In this technique, it uses one mole hydrochloric acid at 60 degrees Celsius to hydrolyze and break the purine deoxyribose bond, exposing aldehydes which are then stained by Schiff's reagent resulting to purple staining. RNA is not hydrolyzed by the hydrochloric acid treatment and thus the reaction is DNA specific. It is also important to note however that if acid hydrolysis is applied for too long, especially at elevated temperature, then the DNA also can be completely removed and this is a known source of failure in the technique. So the next question is how long should hydrolysis be? So for tissue fixed with formaldehyde vapor, duration of hydrolysis is 30 to 60 minutes. For tissue fixed in Zenker solution, the duration of hydrolysis is 5 minutes. You may also employ a counter stain such as 1% light green but this is just optional. So for fulgen staining, DNA stains red-purple while the cytoplasm stains green just like what is shown in the photo on the right. The next stain is methyl green pyronine technique which uses basic dyes to produce differential staining reaction for DNA and RNA. In this technique, methyl green stains the nuclei by binding preferentially and specifically to DNA coloring it green due to binding anionic phosphate group of the DNA to the methyl green while the pyronine binds to RNA and stains the cytoplasm pinkish red color. Next staining technique is fluorescent staining for DNA and RNA. This technique uses fluorochromes which are fluorescent dyes which emit light or visible radiation energy when excited by light of shorter wavelength either visible or ultraviolet. Several fluorochrome tracers are presently available namely fluorescein which is the widely used fluorochrome because of its wide absorption spectrum and blue light range. It emits apple green color which is rarely seen in autofluorescence in mammalian tissue which is often blue in color. Next is rhodamine which is absorbing maximally in green light exhibiting an orange-red emission and are commonly used in two color techniques. Next is acridine orange which is the most commonly used fluorochrome to demonstrate DNA and RNA in fresh or fixed tissues, combining with nucleic acids in cells by salt linkages and cohesion. DNA emits yellow-green fluorescence while RNA stained brick to orange red and this is the most commonly used for screening of cervical smears for cancer cells and lastly is acriflavin which can be used as an alternative to basic fusin in Schiff's reagent for fulgen technique of acid hydrolysis staining the DNA fluorescent yellow color in general, there are known disadvantages associated with fluorescent labels which include the need for a special light source, limited morphology because of poor counterstaining, fading of the signal on storage, 
and intrinsic tissue autofluorescence that is increased by fixation. So we are now on our second part of our lecture which is the staining of lipids. In histotechnology, the word lipid refers to all fat and fat-like or fat-containing substances including triglycerides, fatty acids, lipoproteins, and glycolipids. Lipids or fats are generally classified into simple lipids, compound lipids, and derived lipids. Simple lipids or neutral fats are esters of fatty acids with alcohols and are usually found in the body as energy stores in adipose tissue such as the triglycerides, serving as storage fats in animals with high solubility for certain non-ionic colored substances stainable by Sudan Black B, Sudan 4, and Oil Red O. Next type is compound lipids consisting of a fatty acid and alcohol and one or more other groups such as phosphorus or nitrogen. They are generally found in the central nervous system and example of compound lipids include phospholipids which are important components of cellular membranes particularly found in the mitochondria and nervous tissue elements and are readily stained by Sudan Black B and acid hematin. And another compound lipid is glycolipids, which are composed of fatty acids and hexoses, possessing characteristics of both lipids and carbohydrates, and are therefore stained by Sudan Black B and periodic acid shift techniques. And the last classification is derived lipids, which are fatty acids that are derived from hydrolysis of simple and compound lipids such as cholesterol, bile acids, sex hormones, and adrenocortical hormones. With standard methods of fixation, lipids are largely lost from tissues during processing. The clear areas in this section are truly empty as pointed by black arrows in the photo because the triglycerides in the fat droplet are soluble in the organic solvents used during processing of the section and are therefore removed from the section. Therefore, frozen sections may be required in order to stain for lipids and best demonstrated by cryostat sections. Lipids present in fat embolism, fatty liver, and atheroma may be fixed for staining in paraffin sections by exposing the sections to an emulsion of linoleic acid in lecithin and 70% ethylene glycol at 56 degrees Celsius for 3 days. These tissues are then treated with 2% chromic acid at 4 degrees Celsius for 24 hours followed by 24 hours in 5% sodium bicarbonate with appropriate rinsing in between solutions. Phospholipids and neutral fats will be lost during routine dehydration and embedding. In order to prevent this, phospholipids and neutral fats should be fixed with potassium dichromate or osmic acid. Oxidation of phospholipids by chromate fixation renders them non-extractable by alcohol, toluene, silene, or paraffin. However, they both greatly alter the chemical reactivity of the lipids, which can adversely affect the staining. Formal calcium is the fixative of choice for lipid histochemistry and is prepared by adding 2% calcium acetate to 10% formalin. So in general, histochemical techniques are the common methods of choice for demonstrating lipids in tissue sections. And in the next slides, we will discuss different stains for lipids. First is fat stains and sudan dyes. Sudanophilia is the property of tissues to be stained with fat or oil-soluble dyes regardless of the type of the dye due to their essential lipid nature. The staining is based on the greater physical solubility of the dye in lipid substances than in the usual aqueous alcoholic or acetone alcoholic medium in which they are dissolved. Oil soluble dyes are usually divided into two main groups. First is basic arylamine which has very low water solubility 
And this group includes Sudan Black B, which is the most sensitive lipid stain known, and Sudan Red 7B. And the second group is b naphthol such as the original diazodize. This group includes Sudan 3, which stains lipids orange-red, and Sudan 4, which stains fats more brilliant or deeper red color than Sudan 3. Sudan dyes are group of lipid-soluble solvent dyes, often called lysochromes. For general use, 70% alcohol is an adequate solvent for oil red O and Sudan black. The first Sudan dye introduced is Sudan 3, which is used for staining triglycerides in frozen sections. Sudan Black B is the most sensitive and versatile lipid dye. Unlike other Sudan dyes, Sudan Black B can stain phospholipids as well as neutral fats. However, it cannot stain crystalline cholesterol and free fatty acids dissolved in alcoholic dye bath. To remedy this drawback, the tissue can be pretreated with bromine to make unsaturated lipids insoluble in organic solvents. For frozen sections for Sudan dyes should have a thickness of about 15 micra, then they are stained with Charlac R or Oil Red O, which stains neutral fats and lipofuscin. First method is Sudan Black method for lipids using Sudan Black B as primary stain with Mayer's Carnalum as counter stain. The result of this method shows blue-black lipids and red nuclei. The next method is Sudan 4 stain for lipids which uses Sudan 4 or Scarlac R or Oil Red O as primary stain. Benzoic acid may be added to the staining solution to intensify the resulting color and prevents deterioration. The counter stain used is Harisimatoxylin. And the result of this method shows red lipids and blue or black nucleus as shown in the photo on the right. Next method is oil red O method in dextrin. Unlike the other dyes which use 70% ethanol as solvent, this dye uses propylene glycol as the solvent. The primary stain in this method is oil red O in dextrin and gil to hematoxylin as the counter stain. The result of this method shows red lipid and blue nuclei. Next method is osmic acid stain for fat. Osmium tetroxide or osmic acid is not a dye but is an unstable oxide which is reduced to a permanent black substance by unsaturated fats and fatty acids. The results of this method shows black fats and yellow-orange nuclei. And the last method is Nile Blue Sulfate method for fats. Nile Blue Sulfate is a dye capable of differentiating two lipid classes simultaneously by the action of its two components. A red oxazone which dissolves neutral lipids and a blue oxazine which is basic and reacts with phospholipids and free fatty acids. Now let us discuss histochemical methods of staining lipids. Unlike the fat stains described earlier, histochemical methods involve chemical reactions with specific groups, radicals, or bonds in the lipid molecule. Many of these methods are utilized mainly for research studies. The histochemical demonstration of free acids is based on the observation that free fatty acids bind heavy metal ions such as copper to form soaps which can then be stained with Weigert's lithium hematoxylin, dimethyl aminobenzidine rhodamine, or rubienic acid. Calcium and iron present in the tissue may also bind with copper. In order to extract these elements from the tissue and thus do not create confusion, calcium may be removed by 1% hydrochloric acid, while iron may be removed by 5% oxalic acid. Most of the earlier methods for demonstrating cholesterol were ineffective unless cholesterol had been oxidized, either chemically with ferric salts or by long exposure to atmospheric oxygen. An enzymatic method for oxidizing cholesterol involves a two-stage procedure. 
First is sterified cholesterol is hydrolyzed to free sterol using cholesterol ester. Then cholesterol is then oxidized to release hydrogen peroxide which reacts with diaminobenzidine producing insoluble brown polymer as shown in the photo on the right. The sulfate esters of cerebrosides or sulfatides are generally deposited in the brain and other organs of patients with sulfatide storage disease known as metachromatic leukodystrophy. Cerebrosides are stained by periodic acid shift method and it is a known fact that glycogen can be stained by periodic acid shift method as well. So in order to differentiate it from cerebrosides, glycogen are removed from the tissue using the enzyme diastase. Staining the cerebrosides with chrysal violet produce a metachromatic orange color on sulfatides in contrast to the orthochromatic purple color of other less acidic myelin lipids. Another dye is toluidine blue, which is a standard metachromatic dye for acidic polymers and imparts a yellow-brown or purplish color to sulfatide deposits. Neurons may have significant gangliocyte storage, giving rise to cells suggestive of gangliosidosis like Tay-Sachs disease and GM1 gangliosidosis. Stored gangliocytes are stained PAS positive, sodanophilic positive, and luxol fast blue positive. And that's the end of our lecture.